Is it possible that Catnap let the players survive? Throughout the past three chapters, we've seen a recurring pattern with the main Poppy Playtime enemies. They've all encountered us early in the game, but waited to attack us until the very end. Although Huggy's reasoning can somewhat be explained. In Chapter 1, Head of Innovation Leith Pierre explains Playtime Co.'s security system. This facility is full of hidden motion triggers, which, once set off, will turn on the factory's emergency alarms and directly contact the authorities. And that's one of the more tame aspects of our security system. No spoilers. The spoiler he's referring to is Experiment 1170 or Huggy Wuggy. One of Playtime's employees, Rowan Stoll, reveals that Huggy has cameras in his eyes that follow people around so he's essentially a living representation of the security system. And toward the end of the chapter, Huggy sets off the emergency alert when he begins chasing us. But before then, he'll quietly follow us around the factory. He won't even react when we first encounter him. He'll just stand still and carefully watch us. These strategies might be something that Playtime instilled in Huggy to maximize security. Instead of immediately setting off the alarm and attacking, he was supposed to keep watch of any suspicious activity and once it got too far, Huggy would be obliged to set off the alarm and get rid of the threat. For Mommy, however, her lack of early action in Chapter 2 could be due to her personality. Much like Huggy, Mommy was trained up in a certain way by playtime scientists. She was meant to guide orphans throughout the game station, so enjoying games was a part of her persona. So much so that it became a necessity to play with her prey before directly attacking us. Then what about Catnap? Why didn't he just kill us right away? In the beginning of chapter 3, he finds our body near the crash train and throws us in the trash compactor instead. Like most bigger bodies, Catnap needs food to survive. And while we were unconscious after the crash, we would be very easy to kill and valuable to his food supply. But he decides to miss out on that opportunity by throwing us away. Even if we could have died in the trash compactor, he still gave us the opportunity to escape. At one point, we see him crawling up a vent, and instead of grabbing us and throwing us back in the compactor, he leaves. We see traces of catnap everywhere, not as a harmful threat that's looking to kill us, but rather a mysterious figure lurking through the shadows, carefully watching us. And unlike Huggy, Catnap stalks us for a much longer amount of time. Ali gives us a possible explanation for his peculiar approach though. And keep your eyes open for Catnap. Every shadow and every flickering light is a hiding spot. He always stalks his prey first. He'll take away anything you have to defend yourself. And when you're at your most vulnerable, he'll kill you. Catnap lives for the hunt. And this kind of makes sense because Catnap is modeled after a cat and cats slowly follow their prey until they're close enough to grab it. So it could just be his character design, but usually cats intend to kill whatever prey they spot. So even if they stalk it, they won't let the food get away. Catnap contradicts this by giving us the chance to escape. He decides to go with a verbal warning. Even if he doesn't like us, he still doesn't prefer killing us. But don't you think that's a little weird? We know that Catnap worships the prototype and he won't hesitate to harm or kill anyone that he deems as a heretic. Dog Day confirms this. The prototype is his god and this is what he does to heretics. So if the prototype told Catnap to eliminate us, why would Catnap prolong the process? He would undoubtedly, without hesitation, finish the job to honor his god. But he didn't. Instead, he threw us in the trash, followed us around the factory, 
and gave us a warning to leave. There's a few explanations of why this could be the case. The first one being that Catnap has some sort of humanity left in him. He used to be an orphan by the name of Theodore Grambo, and as a child, he was basically molded by the prototype to carry out his will, but he ended up getting injured with an electric grab pack. To save his life, playtime scientists turned him into 1180, aka Catnap, and he still dedicated his life to the prototype. However, we do know the toys are getting restless in the factory, and despite the prototype's control over them, they still want freedom. Not too long ago, an artist named CG5 collaborated with Mob Entertainment to make another Poppy Playtime song based on Chapter 3. The lyrics to the song Sleep Well clearly portray the feelings of toys stuck in the factory, and this is the first time we're able to hear this. The lyrics, we want freedom, are repeated all throughout the song, and the prototype is referred to as an artificial facade from the fraud of a god. The toys are slowly waking up one by one, realizing that he tricked them into staying inside the factory for good. So, did Catnap decide to betray the prototype as a form of resistance? While this explanation is plausible, it might not entirely pertain to Catnap. In the music video, it's implied that he's one of the toys who want freedom, but he's still painted as a worshipper of the prototype in the game. From childhood, Catnap idolized him, so while he probably also wants freedom, I don't think there's enough of an incentive for him to betray his god. What if the prototype didn't order Catnap to kill us right away in the first place? Perhaps he wanted 1180 to lure the player deeper into the factory and intentionally prolong our journey, making our return much more unbearable. Why would the prototype want to do this? Well, in Home Sweet Home, we encounter a radio with backward speech. To summarize, the voice explains that we missed the hour of joy, an event in which the prototype got almost all playtime toys to band together and kill the employees out of retaliation for the experiments. We also missed a meeting or some sort of planning for the event. The recording emphasizes that we were supposed to be there, which makes me believe that the player was somehow a part of the hour of joy but failed to show up. And if we promised the prototype that we'd help, but flaked at the last minute, he would probably be pretty upset with us. And so, to kill the final employee of Playtime Co., he wants it to be a slow and painful death, playing with our emotions to make us think that we're succeeding, when in reality, we might not have enough power to defeat him. Consider this. At the end of the game, we didn't kill Catnap, we just electrocuted him, but he recovered after a few seconds. Instead of going straight forest after his recovery, he gave himself up to the prototype instead. While this could mean that he wanted to give his god the utmost attention and dedication, I think there was another reason for this. The prototype knew exactly when and where to kill Catnap, so he purposefully wanted us to see him commit the act. It would be a way for the prototype to show off his power and intimidate us. He wouldn't want us to be killed right away, but he would want to make our return more difficult by scaring us half to death, impaling one of his most powerful, loyal subjects right in front of our eyes. The prototype could have killed Catnap at any time. It would have been easy too, since Catnap would willingly sacrifice himself, but he waited until this moment specifically. When you think about it, it was almost an assisted kill. We assisted by electrocuting Catnap and the prototype delivers the final blow by piercing right through him. This not only demonstrates his power, but also his manipulation, making us think that he might be on our side, yet simultaneously confusing us with his motives. The reason why Catnap didn't kill us right away could be that the prototype ordered him to let us roam free and give us the illusion that we were safe. 
but it turned out to be a calculated plan serving as punishment for betraying him during the hour of joy. Also, Cadnap knew that he would be killed by the end of this. Notice how he immediately offers himself up when the prototype reaches down. No words were exchanged, no extra gestures, no fear. Cadnap knew this was coming, and it's something that he and the prototype planned out in advance. And if you believe that Ali is a mimic of the prototype, this theory also adds up. 1006 could be giving Catnap orders to slowly stalk us around the factory while also simultaneously warning us about Catnap's behaviors through the voice of Ali. It was a cold and calculated plan in which he let us believe that we could actually defeat him. We don't know if Catnap knew the full extent of this plan, but we do know he was the perfect one to do it since he would follow the prototype's commands with no question. It's also important to note what Poppy tells us about these two characters. There is no doubt that this was intentional. He's the final obstacle the prototype has placed against us. The prototype doesn't want us to die right away because he wants us to face him himself. Catnap was just a mere pawn in this plan. But why do you think Catnap let us survive? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and click on this video right here.